Shani Fannies. Welcome to Educating Shani. I'm Shani and I'm recovering from an eating disorder. Hi Shani, hi! Welcome to part two of this Q&A for this week. Um, if you missed part one, I will link it in the description below. And let's get right into your questions. Okay, Liza Ambrose, Ambrose says, what is your advice for someone who has been in recovery for a long time? I've been in eating disorder recovery for real for a few years, but always end up going back. What has helped you stay clean this time? Always sending you my love. I love you too. Thank you so much. Um, well, I've never been, I've never gone that long um, like you have, so I don't know. I am coming up on my nine months. Um, and just keep in mind, it wasn't perfect for me. I had a couple of slip ups, um, but I didn't let it get me down. I kept fighting. I, I, I didn't want to be like, oh my gosh, I messed up. I finished and purged. Therefore, now I have to just fall right back into bulimia and just might as well just do it every day because I messed up my progress anyway. Don't think about it that way. That's really, really damaging. I've come to learn. And instead, just be like, okay, take a day off of your progress and just a little setback and keep going. You're still doing great. And just take it little by little and just don't be too, 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 too hard on yourself or else you're never gonna get to where you think is possible. I mean, no one's ever gonna be perfect and just go easy on yourself because the harder you are on yourself, as I know and you know and everybody knows, um, that makes it so much easier for Ed to swoop in into our mind and steal us from any happiness and any heart and any love that we have inside. He's a real dick like that, so. He's not up here, he's down here. Hear that? Asshole. Next question. Okay, psychologically tipsy said, new viewer and sub here, hey girl, what's up? Um, what little things do you do? What little things do you do for yourself every day that can, that helps you feel good about yourself mentally? It can be more than one thing. Well, welcome to the channel, first of all. Welcome to our family. We love you. For me, it's um, doing things for other people. So, in my life, that means doing live streams for people, making videos for people, texting people when I feel brave enough, even though I have severe phone anxiety, playing with my birds. Um, doing something for Danny, setting something up for Danny, uh, cleaning my house a little bit here and there, watching a show if my body completely gives out and I can't do anything else, watch a show that makes me feel good. I get, I guess I just feel, I feel the best when I'm productive, especially recently. I feel really good because recently I've been trying to come back to YouTube and working really hard to give you guys some good videos again and every time I post a video and see like the reactions and stuff, it makes me just want to keep on doing that more. So maybe find something in your life that's like, will somehow reward you in a way and make you feel good, make you feel like you accomplished something, even if it's literally something as little as making cookies for a neighbor and then sending you a thank you card or making a card for your grandma and sending it to her or calling your grandma or, you know, just little things. And then you'll see how it's affecting other people in a good way. And that makes you feel better about yourself as well. <laughs> Trixie Fellow said, why are you so lovable? <laughs> I don't know, because my mother raised me that way. Okay, Sh Sheila? Shayla? S-H-E-Y-L-A, -S I've never seen that spelling. Is that Shayla or Shyla? I don't know. Um, beautiful, either way. Shyla, I think, says, hi, I've been waiting for this, yay! Um, I have an eating disorder, my best friend knows this, but he doesn't know anything about eating disorders, which makes this kind of rough. How can I tell, tell him all the things that I feel? Also for you, what's the worst part of an eating disorder? And also, how old are you? You're really nice. Have you ever been hospitalized? I haven't, and I haven't even fainted, which makes me think that, that, I'm, that I'm not sick enough. That's not true. Um, not necessarily true. Uh, I don't want to recover, but I also don't know it's, I don't, but I also don't know it's the best. What are your best recovery tips? You make me feel I can achieve this. Thank you. Sending hugs from Mexico and sorry for my English. Well, thank you. You're so sweet. Um, okay, so your first question was, how do I get my friend, I guess? Yeah, how do I tell my friend all the things that you feel? Just tell him. 
just tell him just like set aside a time take him take him to a park and sit on a bench social distancing if if, if you're if, if need to do that where you are um or just like set apart some time for him to have a phone call or something and just tell him just just like ask him put your phones away put any distractions away go for a drive if you want whatever and just like tell him why it happened for you and where it came from and what it is and how it affects you badly and just tell him how he can help you um which in my experience the best way to help is to just encourage and i mean danny tells me every single day that he believes in me and that he knows that i can keep going and that i can keep fighting and he reminds me every day that i've already beaten a lot of things and therefore i'm strong enough to handle whatever today brings um so just talk to him if he's your best friend then he'll listen and just set aside some time and talk to him about it you know also for you what's the worst part of an eating disorder i think the lies i think being deceptive to my family and my husband is the worst because i don't lie i don't like to lie to people and so um especially not those that i love but as you as in anyone with an eating disorder knows Ed, you know, makes us lie to people so that we can hide it, so that we can cover it up, so that it will keep going, so it will be easier to keep on going in your eating disorder. So I think for me, that's the one that I felt the worst about. And then also just throwing up. I hate throwing up. And I don't know why. Bulimia has always been my um, eating disorder of choice, but it has, even though I despise throwing up. So I'm really glad that I don't have to do that anymore. Not that I had to before, but I'm just glad I don't, I'm just glad I'm not doing it anymore is what I mean by that. Also, how old are you? I am 35, I'll be 36 in October. Um, you're really nice, have you ever been hospitalized? No, I have not, so don't take um, my advice on that. I don't have any advice to give on that, sadly. Um, the only advice I can give you is outpatient stuff that I've been through. I've been over two decades worth, no, over like a decade and a half's worth of therapy, and then also, and then also going to meetings at um, recovery centers. So it's kind of similar, except I'm not living there. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I believe that treatment for everybody is different. And for me, it just didn't feel right to do it. And that's okay. Um, and I truly was being honest with myself about it. And so that's what I decided. But if you're thinking of going in, I always tell people, I always encourage you, if, if you think that's something that's going to help you, please just do it. Please do it. Do it as many times as you need to. <coughs> do whatever you need. But what I can tell you is that therapy and going to meetings are very, 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 very helpful. I haven't even fainted, which makes me think I'm not sick enough. That's not true. You're never not sick enough for eating disorder treatment. If you know you have an eating disorder, that's all you need to know. And you deserve treatment, whether it's, again, inpatient or outpatient or meetings on top of that or therapy whatever it is you don't have to faint you don't have to be a certain weight you don't have to you don't have to do anything to be sick enough if you have an eating disorder you're sick enough for help uh, and I understand that sadly the world that we live in is like well you don't look like you have an eating disorder so clearly you don't need help and and then you feel stupid it, like that's been my life my entire life <laughs> i can't tell you because i've been overweight my entire life and by overweight i mean um by like bmi chart standards which i realize are bullshit so it's fine but anyway like i've been heavier my whole life i guess and every time i've told a new doctor or a dentist or something that i had an eating disorder the reaction would always literally be, uh, I would tell a doctor, yeah, I'm struggling with an eating disorder, and this is what they would do. There you go. Okay, and how long have you been struggling? Like, they don't even believe me or something. Like, they look my body up and down, and I'm like, how are you a doctor? My brother-in-law is a doctor, and he explained it to me, and this needs to change. Um, he said that in his eight years of medical school and books and books and the thickest hundreds of thickest books in the world there was one page on eating disorders one and it wasn't even like how to help people it was just explaining what the different types of eating disorders were so that is something that needs to be changed in society i think all doctors need to learn a little bit more about it because it's killing so many people okay i'm really nervous about this but here we go okay 
Uh, boob tube, love that. Boob tube 19 said, are there any triggers you still struggle with? Only if you're comfortable talking about it and and the answer itself isn't triggering, of course. Um, I'm new to your channel and I love your content. Well, thank you, welcome boob tube, love the name. Um, sorry, my birds are in here and they're starting to like talk with me, so it's kind of cute in my opinion, but if it's bothering you, I'm sorry. They're really cute though, so just let it be cute. If they start screaming, then I'll take them out, but right now they're just like kind of talking. You talking to the people? Are there, okay, are there any triggers that I still struggle with? I am so nervous to answer this. I don't want this to come across as you did something wrong, some of you out there. I don't want to hear, oh my gosh, Shani, I'm so sorry I triggered you. I must have triggered you because I do that or whatever. That's not what I want this to turn into. But if you want to, um, if you care what my opinion is, then take it and listen to it. But just know I'm not angry with anyone and I'm not, it just triggers me to a place, takes me back to a place where I used to be. And that's a big problem. Um, so basically what I'm talking about is, and by the way, I still do this sometimes too, so I'm no saint here. Negativity. Um, and what I mean by that specifically, negativity about yourself constantly, over and over and over and over and over. For me, it's really difficult when I spend, you know, a couple hours talking to someone that I've met online and by the end of our talk, it's like, yeah, I'm doing so much better, thank you, and thanks for helping me and talking to me and da da da. I'm doing so much better, I'm not gonna complain anymore, I'm not, and then the next day they come on a live stream and be like, my life is shit. And I'm like, well, that's how I used to be and I hate that. Like, that's the thing that I look back and I'm like, that's the most embarrassing part for me personally, is like, I was such a negative person where there would never be a day that, that was a good day. Um, it was always a bad day. It was always the worst case scenario. It was always just, I'm not gonna make it through the day. I'm gonna kill myself tonight and I'm gonna, like that mentality, if I see that in other people online, that does trigger me and it takes me back to that place where I feel kind of ashamed. Not that you should feel ashamed, but I'm just like being honest, that's how I felt. Like I feel ashamed for disregarding all of the help and love that my family and therapists and friends have tried to give me by by being like no progress at all and just continuously day by day complaining and um, about the same thing over and over. Uh, when I've gotten help for it and I've gotten suggestions and I've gotten a lot of encouragement and love sent my way and I just feel like it I just feel like it comes across as like I don't even care what these people took their time to help me with like I don't care that my mom spent you know three hours last night laying in bed with me to make sure that I didn't binge and purge or I didn't care that Danny um, is hurting so bad that his wife is dying in front of his eyes and like I didn't care about any of that because in the moment I'd be like okay yeah mom I'm totally gonna I'm not thank you for doing this mom like I love you thank you so much or Danny I would be like thanks baby thank you that helped me so much and then the next day to do the same thing again um, I can't imagine how frustrating that was for Danny and my family, and actually I can't imagine it because that's how I feel these days. So if if someone comes to me and is like, hey, please help me, please, I wanna kill myself, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna be happy and da da da, and then I take a lot of time, I spend a lot of time talking to them, and then by the end of our talk, they're like, you know what, I'm gonna take these tools and I'm gonna use them and learn them and thank you so much. And then the very next day they come back and say, I suck and my life is shit and nothing's ever gonna change and da da da. And I'm like, well, I put a lot into that for you and that makes me realize what I've done to my husband and my family and that they put in so much for me and it was kind of like a slap in the face being like all the work and love and support that you've given me was just for nothing. And this is something I have started recently to be more aware of and trying to not just focus on the negative and it's hard it's really hard to not focus on the negative when your life is very negative, <laughs> but you can choose to try and have a better attitude about it and try to just be strong and do your best to get through it rather than just like giving in and letting it just eat you apart and just 
destroy you already more than you already feel like you are. Like just try and it's baby steps and it's something I'm working on too, just appreciating the love and support that I have around me and not slapping them in the face by not listening to it and not taking it after hours and hours and years of love and encouragement from my husband and my family. Um, yeah. Hi. Hey. It's real sweet. It's not sweet. It's pretty sweet. You don't know sweet. Now I know you. I saw this shirt in my mama's closet one day and I was like, this is the cutest shirt I've ever seen. And my mom is the type of person, if you go to her and say, oh my gosh, that's adorable, or oh my gosh, that's delicious cookies, she'll automatically like give you everything. So she'll be like, take the shirt, just take it, it's yours, or take all the cookies home with you, or you know what I mean? Like that's her, her love language is just like, well, she has lots of them, but that's one of them. It's like, just take it, just take it. And I'm like, you don't want it? She's like, no, I want you to have it, I want you to have it. So this shirt is really special to me because of that, so thanks mom. <laughs> No, no, when Nolan Tilly says hi, Shani. Hi. Um, I sent you this on Instagram some months ago, but anyway, I have a question or more like a request for a video. If you feel like it, I think it could help other people too. I have a friend who struggles with depression, anorexia, and self harm. I want to help her so bad, but I don't really know the right thing to say or how to encourage her to seek help. She's been in therapy before and also spent a few weeks in treatment. She was uh, she was better afterwards, but now she's struggling again. Can you please do another video on how to help a friend? Yes, I can. Um, I know that you already made one. It was your third video, but maybe you have some updates? Yes. On the other hand, I kind of feel like a hypocrite for even asking, you're not a hypocrite, for even asking this because I have issues myself, we all do, that I don't want to acknowledge, so I don't even know if I'm entitled to want to help her, if I'm not even ready to admit to myself that I might have a problem myself. Hmm. Gosh, I feel like such an idiot. You're not an idiot. Also, I'm sorry for any errors I made. English is not my first language. By the way, I love you and your love your videos. They brighten my day and you're such an awesome and amazing person. Uh, you and what you achieve on your YouTube channel is inspiring and so important. That's really sweet. Thank you for that. Um, Nolan, I think I'm saying that right, I hope. Thank you. Yes, I can make another video and please don't feel guilty. Although I get it, like I always feel like a hypocrite when I make a video of like, okay, how to do this, how to not have your behaviors on, how to not do, when like I'm struggling myself or back in the day when I was really struggling and I would see a friend that was struggling, I would feel like a hypocrite if I was like, um, you really need to get yourself some help because I wasn't getting myself help. I get it. I've been there. So maybe just use this as an opportunity to help her and to help you. Maybe use that as motivation and be like, well, if she can receive this help, then maybe I can too. So yes, I will gladly make another video of, on how to talk to your friend with an eating disorder. Uh, Vincent Castillo said, will you be pre-ordering the Xbox Series X or the PS5? No. Okay, I think that's all for today. Thank you. If I didn't answer your question, just leave it again and leave in the in the comments of this video. And then next time I do a q and I'll go and look at the comments of this video. Um, so if I didn't do your question, leave it below and hopefully I can get to it next time. But thank you to everyone for sending them in. Um, and I love you guys. And remember forever and always that you're beautiful, you're worth it, and I'm Thank you for watching. Bye. See you soon.